You will find the Tech 1 under the Control Blocks menu of the Object Toolbar. So when we go to drop this into the software, we have to determine how many logic outputs do we want. You can have up to 32 logic outputs if you wish, but for this example, we won't need that many, so I'm going to select four. You can use the logic outputs to do things such as recall presets or select sources. So let's open up the Tech 1 dialog by double clicking on the block. This dialog is divided into two main areas. On the left, you have control items. These are the options the users of the Tech 1 will see on the OLED display. On the right is where we program a particular control item to either manipulate a level control, drive one of our logic outputs, or actually do both at the same time. The device ID field is how we identify which physical Tech 1 remote is programmed by this particular Tech 1 block. We'll see that later when we actually load the file. So let's program a few control items. So in this file, our example is we have four program sources the user can choose from to act as background music sources for a single zone output. So we want to program the Tech 1 to allow the user to select any one of these four sources and control its level. So I'm going to start by adding a few control items. You can actually add up to 32 of these control items, but we obviously don't need that many. We're only going to use four. So the text you see here is exactly what the user will see on the OLED display. So we will rename these to reflect the names of the program sources in our system. Now we will program each of the control items to select a particular source and adjust its volume. To do that, we have to find either the object code or the instance tag of the block in question we want to control. The block we want to control is the source selector block. So to find its object code, I'm going to right click and go open the property sheet. So the object code is what the Tessera software uses to uniquely identify each block. So here is the object code of the source selector. So I can click object code, find source selector one, and it will automatically populate the instance tag. The instance tag is what you use to access blocks with the Tessera text protocol. You don't need to worry about setting that yourself. As you can see, it automatically set that once I found the object code. You can use either the instance tag or the object code. One or the other will work. Now all we need to do is pick which channel out of the source selector block do we wish to control. Since there are four sources, we have to pick which source in question should this control item control. The radio source is on channel 1, so I'm going to select level source 1. Now I just repeat the process for each of the four sources. So that's the level control taken care of. Now we need to address the logic outputs. To do that, I'm going to tie the logic outputs to the logic inputs of the source selector. Now the last step is I must go back to the control items and assign the correct logic output to the right logic input for this control item. To do that, I go over to logic control and I'm going to select logic index 1. And again, I just repeat the process for each one. Notice as I am assigning these logic outs to control items, they're no longer available to be assigned to other control items. A logic output cannot be assigned to multiple control items. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. So our programming is complete. The last step is to enter the device ID. 
it's a good practice to use a name that will identify what the tech one's role is in the system. So for this system, I'm going to call it BGM source selector. <laughs> 